So the Lord in the gospel today is speaking about <clears throat> persistence in prayer and the need to persist in prayer, which uh, is something that I think as generations have gone by, we have gotten worse and worse at, uh, so much so that I think my generation and maybe the generation after me, we are terribly impatient uh, when it comes to prayer because life for us is everything is just so much quicker you know what i mean everything is just, everything just moves and you want entertainment you can have entertainment you want to watch a tv program you don't have to wait until next week to watch macgyver you can just watch a box set of macgyver tonight until tomorrow morning and then sleep in until lunchtime and live your life in your pajamas it's amazing uh so uh yeah, so we were very impatient, we're very impatient, we're just used to things arriving right, right now, right now. So the idea of having to invest, and it can be at times for years in a prayer intention, uh, is, is, is very difficult for us. Like, I mean, I, I, I've seen and heard people who said, look, I've, I've, I've prayed a whole rosary and the thing hasn't been answered yet. I mean, what's the problem? <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't really think, I don't think it works like that. It's not like a slot machine. Um, uh, you sometimes you have to, and, and, okay, so two things on this. The reason, the reason the Lord may delay in prayer, okay, there's, 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 there's a couple of reasons, but one may be that maybe the time isn't right, okay? So maybe it's not right for that person that you're praying to fall helplessly in love with you. Maybe it's not the right time, okay? You're only seven years of age, okay? <laughs> Give it time, the time will come. Okay, right? I remember when I, was, when I was in fifth year, I was praying. I actually did actually, actually pray that a particular girl uh, would, you know, that things could, you know, a bit of a blossoming friendship kind of a thing. That would have been nice. Um, uh, so I, yeah, I was praying at the time, and uh, then the, the song by Garrett Brooks, Unanswered Prayers, came out. I used to sing that with a particular, particular, <laughs> particular gusto. Yeah, that, that, was, that was hard. It wasn't easy, lads. Um, but uh, yeah, sure, look. I think it all ended up fairly well. But, like, you see, I couldn't have known that at the time. I couldn't have known that at the time. So, like, the Lord's answer there was, you know, not so much in that case, now isn't the time, but this is actually, I've got something better for you. So, now isn't the time, or I've got something better for you. I've got something better for you. Okay? But in both those answers, now isn't the time, or I've got something better for you, we, what's required of us, then, in the meantime, is patience and trust. Patience and trust, patience, the thing that I want, that, that, that I've prayed for, I might not get it immediately. But be patient. And trust then, especially in the, in the second situation where uh, if, uh, <clears throat> if it's not the right thing for you, I've got something better for you, but I haven't seen this other thing yet. How do I know it's there? How do I know you'll really deliver? How can I be sure? Do, do you trust me? Do you trust me or, or don't you? Do you believe that I, I can provide for you? Do you believe that, 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 I, that, that in my divine mind I can think of many, many, many ways of making you happier than you could ever imagine? Do you trust me? It can also happen, or I think it's an, also an important thing to, to keep in mind, that in this situation, so we've prayed for something and it's not the right time, or we pray for something and God has something better in mind. In both situations, through our act of prayer, through our persistence in prayer, we get Jesus. Okay, so as we're praying, as we're praying, we're not, we won't necessarily immediately get everything we ask for. Even though, I mean, the Lord says here, he will see justice done and, and done speedily. <clears throat> yes, but that's not to say if we pray for a Ferrari, you know, there'll be one outside the door by the end of Mass. You know, it doesn't work that way either. It's not... You know, it has to be something that, that, that God knows is worthwhile, that's good for our, our ultimate goal, which is heaven. Uh, so, but in the meantime, as, as we're praying, as we're persisting in prayer, what we get is a deeper relationship with Jesus. And so then we, we never lose. You know, as long as we're praying and persisting in prayer and loving in prayer and trusting in prayer, we get Jesus. We get a deeper relationship with him, so we don't lose. It may take... It may take years. Sometimes some of these intentions, the conversion of a spouse, for example, that can be a 20-year project. Though you should never marry a project. But like, it can take 20 years for that, to, for that to, to happen. Saints, there are certain saints whose husbands converted on their, on their deathbeds. 
You know, so it can be, it just can take a long time. But it got me thinking also about something, again, which I think we're not the best at here in, in, in Ireland when it comes to our, our prayer lives. Uh, our prayer lives, as, as long as I can remember anyway, uh, in, in Ireland, it tends to be very much about constant vocal prayer. Absolutely nothing wrong with vocal prayer. Not taking away from it at all. Please pray the rosary. Please pray, please pray the chaplet. But what we're not so good at is silence. Even if you go to Loch Derg or anything, there's, there's very little silence in Loch Derg. You, you, you pray, you're, bed, you're walking around the beds, you're, you're saying your prayers. Often or for some, the faster the better. You get it done and then you're back into the tea room uh, for some misery and um yeah but it, it's, it's all about we like we love the you know we love the movement and prayer and you're talking and you're doing and, and what we're not good at is silence and then in recent years then other kind of spiritualities have come and and as such taken advantage of the fact that our prayer tends not to have very much silence so then you've got like you know your mindfulnesses and your yogas and all this kind of thing um Presenting this this kind of prayer, which leads us to inner peace, you know. So it's it's peace and it's tranquil and silent. You become aware of your surroundings and you become aware of yourself and you, you enter into yourself and all this kind of thing. And it sounds wonderful. It sounds wonderful. I'm not advocating it. It sounds wonderful because it's who doesn't want to be peaceful? Who doesn't want peace? It sounds great. And our world is so busy, and then especially with the phone and that, you're always contactable, no matter where you are. And on WhatsApp, they can see if you're online, you know. So you're never really free, like. So you're never, it's never really quiet. And so you have to see these meditations sound fantastic. But what's the problem with them? Well, the problem with them is <laughs> Christian prayer is Christ-centered. Christian prayer is Christ-centered. So our prayer leads us to Christ. So then even in our silence, right, so we're sitting in a chapel, or you're driving in the car, concentrate on the rules of the road but you can still drive your car and pray and you're in this moment of silence and you can be there united with the Lord so there are, you know, you're driving the car and there's a million and one things going through your head because you've, you've shopping to do you've people to pick up you have to get this done and then get back and then you have to get the ch tyre pressure checked and then you have to pick up the bread on the way home and then at least have a special on chickens so you have to pop in there okay, and this is all kind of going through your head and you know, as you're driving, you think, okay, Lord, 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 I, better, I want to give some of this time to you, okay, because you deserve it. And I know that once I get home and the kids are back from school, I'm going to be flat out until they're flat out at, at, at about half eight. So this is, this is my shot. This, these are my kind of ten minutes on, way, on the way to school or on the way to the shop where it'll actually be quiet. Okay, radio off. Okay. And then... We have to enter into this place inside where we meet the Lord. And there'll be a lot of, a lot of distractions, a lot of obstacles on the way there, I, I can imagine, a lot of things. But I find, and I'm, I, I, I'm really no expert, I really should be a whole lot better at this by now. But I find what, what helps is if I try to use the distractions and the obstacles as aids to my prayer, rather than kind of giving out to myself for being distracted by a certain thing, bring that thing into my prayer. So you want to pray, but you're so annoyed at that person. You know, so annoyed at someone for whatever they said or did. Okay, so rather than saying, look, okay, push that away, push that away, inner peace, that doesn't really work, okay, because you can't necessarily push thoughts away like that. Instead, bring it into the prayer and say, Lord, I pray for them. I pray for myself that I can forgive them. I pray for myself that I can. Lord Jesus, help me, help me to forgive them. Help me to be merciful as you are merciful. Help me to show mercy as you have shown mercy to me. And now your distraction has just become a prayer. And then you don't need to be afraid of distractions anymore. Just bring them in. Bring the whole lot of them in. Bring the family of distractions into your prayer. So what else is there? Well, maybe there's a, like, there are unfortunate situations with families and wills and all that kind of rubbish going on as well. And there are you know, brothers, sisters looking for a bigger cut of the will and contesting this, that, and the other. And it's just all so divisive. So, Lord, I pray for, pray for my family. I pray for Tommy and Jerry and Michael and Anne and whoever else, and, and pray for peace in the family. And just in the silence of your own heart, you see, your whole life now is getting brought to the Lord. And 
you don't have to tell Jesus what the solution to the problem is. You know, so, so Jesus, I'm, there's a will going on here. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the concept, but uh, we've you know inheritance tax to pay, and you know if we can divide it out this way, then we pay less inheritance tax. So, so what we need to do, what you need to arrange, Lord, is um, if you don't mind, if you could get Jerry to sign that thing there, and uh, then, just I mean, you don't have to actually come up with the answer <laughs> to tell him what to do. You give it to him. You just, you, you just give it to him. Tell him what the situation is. Not that he needs to be told. He knows, but you need to say it. You give it to the Lord. And then, so this is, this is how we attain peace and, and, and silence in our prayer. It's, it's, it's not about kind of artificially shoving out the world, because I don't think we can do that. But you just bring it all into the presence of the Lord and you just, you leave it there. So all these other forms of meditation, what they stop short of doing is bringing us to God. Like this kind of centering idea. It brings you to the center of yourself. And what's there? Well, nothing. Well, that's useless. Sorry, like, but that's, that's really unhelpful. Our prayer brings us to Jesus, who is the complete opposite to nothing. He is being itself. So we, 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 our prayer guides us to Christ, not just to like, you know, enter into a, a, a quiet room and push out all the obstacles and push out all distractions and push out all thoughts and then I'm at peace here. Yeah, but you have to leave and eventually go out, in, out into the real world. So what are you going to do? What we do in, in, in our prayer, in, in, in Christian prayers, we bring, we bring all those things in and we give them to the Lord. We, so we bring them to God. So it's not just about, like, for those two minutes attaining inner peace or, or, or silence artificially, but it's about bringing everything and everyone to the Lord and leaving him there, leaving them there and say, Lord, this is, this is your family. This is your church. This is, these are your priests and my children. I consecrate them to you, so they're yours. Grant them what they need. And that gives, that's, that's not an artificial inner peace. That's real peace. Because now it's, it's not in your hands anymore. We keep giving things over, keep handing, handing things over. And then we leave our time of prayer or and the car journey stops, or we have to leave the Adoration Chapel, and we go out into the real world, and it's, it's not scary anymore. And it's not overwhelming anymore. Because I know that in all these problems, these real issues that I have out there, I bring them all to the Lord. So I have nothing to be afraid of. It's the complete opposite to what a lot of these other spiritualities present us with. You know, enter into a place of nothingness. That's the last thing we need. We don't need nothing. That, that's not a bad grammar experience. You know, we, don't need, we don't need nothingness. We need godness. We need divinity. We need Jesus. Nothing isn't going to help you. God will. So Lord, we ask you to help us to grow in our prayer lives. Whatever age we are and wherever we're from, whatever experience of prayer that we have, that we can grow deeper in our prayer lives, in our persistence in prayer, in our trust in prayer, and that in our prayer we may discover you and we may discover true peace. Amen.